we had previously discussed global descriptive metrics such as mean, median, mode, weighted average, as well as dispersion metrics such as standard deviation and variance, these global metrics essentially describe an entire data set. Previously, we had talked about aspatial data, say a list of populations or median household incomes for an entire county. Here, we're going to be applying these methods to spatial data. So we'll be looking at global descriptive spatial metrics such as the mean center, median center, central feature, as well as some type of directional distribution for an entire set of points. In this example, we're going to be looking at a crimes for Durham City at the block group level. And so you can see red points here, which represent crimes. There's about, I guess, about 20,000 of these crimes right here. And then I have Durham block groups. There's about 100 of these block groups here within Durham County, and in particular, Durham City. And you can see that we have these for population 2013. So one of the first things we're going to do here is we're going to go to Analysis and click on My Tools. And now under the Spatial Statistics Tools, there's going to be a toolbox called Measuring Space Geographic Distributions. Like we said before, we have something called the Mean Center. We'll start with that real briefly. And we have the Mean Center. If I move my mouse over here, it says identifies the geographic center, the center of concentration for a data set. And if I click on it, what we're going to see here is we're going to see how the mean center actually works. So this is a description of it, and we can see how it works. We can see these big fancy formulas right here, but basically all we're going to be doing for this set of red points here is just averaging up all the latitudes, averaging up all the longitudes. So averaging up all the x's, averaging up all the y's. And it has some caveats here in that we want to look at uh, projected data. And so you'll see we're looking at projected data here based on the North Carolina state plane projection, where that we're measuring these in northings and eastings based on feet from some 00, zero located, lo, zero, zero location um, located somewhere down in uh, Alabama. So the first thing we'll do with our input feature classes, we're going to be looking at tutorial crimes. And then we're just going to call this the mean center. We can apply a weight field if there's some type of weight field, but we'll look at that in a second. And then there's some case and dimension fields that we won't talk about here. So essentially, for all of these crimes, we're going to be averaging up all the latitudes and averaging up all the longitudes. So I'm going to click on Run. Here we go. So you can see the average of all my latitudes and the average of all my longitudes. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center of population within this particular area as well. So this time I'm going to look at my Durham block groups. I'm going to call this the mean weighted center, where now my weight field is going to be my POP 2013. And so remember what this weighted average does, essentially. And if we were to look at the formula here with the weighted average, we're looking at this weighted mean center, just like we did with our GPA, you know, with our grade point average or whatever we were looking at, where it's going to be weighted by the population. So what is the center of population based on these block groups? We could go down to block level, but I don't want to work with all those blocks. So once again, I'm going to run this. So now we have the center of crime versus the center of population. Let's see how those two things compare to each other. And then the mean weighted center, I'll just click right here. Click on my symbology, make it a black circle here. So now when we look at this, we can see the center of crime 
is definitely to the east of the center of population. So you can see to the east of the center of population, we have a lot more crime. Now we're going to look at some other different centrality metrics to explore these as well. So we can definitely see that there's some skewing to the east for all of Durham or all of Durham City's population. Next thing we'll look at here are some other centrality metrics that we have. We have something called the median center. Once again, the median center identifies the location that minimizes the overall Euclidean distance in a data set. So it's going to find the point that minimizes the overall Euclidean straight line distance to a feature, every feature in the data set. So we're going to be doing a lot of calculations right here. So we'll just see how this one compares to the other one. So median center, I'm just going to give it a name here. I won't give it uh, any weight here because we're just working with crimes and we're going to assume all crimes are going to be the same or treated the same, even though they may not be. And so now you can see my median center is going to be a little bit further to the east of my mean center. And it might be due to the way that the, the, the shape of the city of Durham that we're looking at right here. But this is another centrality metric here. And last thing that we'll look at related to this is the central feature. So when I click on the central feature, it says the identify the most centrally located feature in a point line or polygon. And if I wanted to, I can actually highlight what this calculation actually does. So we can learn how it calculates it in a line point polygon feature class. Centrally located feature identifies the most centrally located distribution warehouse or crime or whatever we're looking at here. So I can go back here. And so this calculates it. And this is using accumulated distances. So we're going to assume just by looking at this, when we look at accumulated distances, we're going to, it's probably going to be the closest feature closest to our median center. So our central feature is going to be our tutorial crimes. It's going to be the central feature. We can use Euclidean or Manhattan distance if we like. And we're going to run this. So now we can zoom in here and you can see that the central feature is going to be the crime closest to my median center. And you can see this point in yellow here, which is the median center, is truly a mathematical calculation. But the central feature is actually going to be a crime or a warehouse or a central repository or fire station or whatever we're looking at here. You know, so in looking at these right here, you can see that in black here, we have the mean weighted center of population versus these centrality metrics. And looking at these, you can see that crime and population are distributed differently. So once again, crime and population are distributed differently based on these global metrics here. These describe the entire data set. So 17,000 crime points or however many crime points we have here have been kind of agglomerated into a single point and generalized into a single point measured slightly differently. Another metric that we're going to look at is the directional distribution standard deviation ellipse. We've used this term standard deviation before. I'll go and uncheck these. I can click on the uh, tool here and it says creates a standard deviation ellipse or ellipses to summarize spatial characteristics. And if I wanted to, I can see how it works. And so we remember what the standard deviation is. It's the distance away from the mean, how far something is away from the mean, which is going to be unitless. So it creates a standard deviation ellipse. We can look at the z-scores. And basically, it represents the z-scores a spatial representation of z-scores. And if we wanted to, we can see how it works. 
So you can once again see the uh, the uh, calculations. We can see this distribution, assuming a normal distribution, the 68, 95, 99.7 with the standard deviations about your X and Y. In some cases, it will work with uh, Z or elevation data. But some of the potential applications, we can map crimes that identify relationships to a particular features, such as string of restaurants or bars or boulevard or something like that. And so this is going to calculate a eigenvector which is going to have an angle attached to it. And then the standard deviation, which will calculate or capture the number of points within this feature class for 66, 68, 99, 95%. So my input feature class is going to be tutorial crimes. And we're just going to calculate this as one standard deviation ellipse. And now, once again, we can see what this looks like here. And so you can kind of see the you know, northeast, southwest, almost north-south orientation of our crime right along kind of this axis right here. So we've created a new axis. And then you can see the standard deviation ellipse. So we can look at two different sets of points or diff two different sets of crimes where that one standard deviation ellipse is bigger than another means that it's going to be more spatially distributed than other types of crimes that we're looking at here. And so you can see right here, about two thirds of all points are within this standard deviation ellipse. The other third are outside, which represents about one standard deviation based on the distribution of our data and whatnot. We're going to look at one other example here. And I'm going to open up map three. And we can look at something like the population center of the United States at different scales. So last thing I'll talk about here, this is a really good application when we look at something like the center of population, where we look at the mean center, input feature class, you can see for my states and my counties, I've actually gone and stored information like POP 2013, POP 2013, 17, POP 2013, POP 2017. And so this is a really good example of working with the weighted average once again. I want to look at the different counties. We'll call it Detail County Mean Center. My weight is going to be my POP 2013. And I'll go through and run this. We're looking at a weighted average of all 3,000 counties in the United States. So the counties that have the highest population, they're going to contribute more to this weighted average than others. And so once again, you can see the center of population here is in southern, um, southern Missouri. I might go through and do this again just for pop population 2013, just see if there's any difference. Let's see if there's any difference between these two population centers since they're taken at different times. And this is at the county level. So it looks to be they're going to be in the slightly. And you can see that it's moved slightly to the south and to the west over this time period. It's kind of interesting. Just over this four-year time period, the population center has moved to the south and to the west. Why? Because we see population growth in southern counties, uh, southern states, and western states. Uh, one last thing that I'll do is I'll calculate this now at the state level, and you'll see some differences between these. I was working with 3,000 counties before. Now I'm going to work with 50 states in population center, and we'll just notice the differences. And so what I'm trying to show here is really articulate when you work with higher scale data, you're going to be getting much better results than you work with poor or coarser scale data. 
So now we're going to be looking at the population center here. Versus another area. And so you can see how they're different here. You know, just doing some quick measurements. This is probably 20 or 30 miles off when I measure this at one scale using the state data versus another scale at the county level. And then once again, these are global descriptive metrics using the weighted mean here. So in summary here, in this tutorial, we talked about global descriptive, descriptive metrics for spatial data. We looked at the mean center. We looked at the weighted mean center. We looked at the median center, the central feature. And then for a set of points, we looked at directional distribution using our Z scores where essentially we mapped our Z scores and then mapped some eigenvectors and did some calculations outside of those, create a new axis. But we could look at the distribution of points along these and map these and look for you know dispersal uh, so that we virtually or we uh, graphically represented dispersion that we talked about with our standard deviation in our variance.